hello. Uh, my name is Luciano Floridi, and I'm very happy to be with you, uh, at least virtually, as I mentioned in my welcoming message, to share with you in this video uh, a few thoughts about the definition of AI. Let me uh, premise immediately that there is no such thing as a definition of AI. The reason is obvious to anyone who has worked uh, sufficiently in the field. AI refers to an archipelago of technologies, sciences, practices, business strategies, even social understandings of what we mean by artificial and intelligence. Indeed, even Alan Turing in his famous 1950 article when talking about not really artificial intelligence, the terminology wasn't available yet, but about machines that could or could not think, ended by saying that could machines think uh, was a pointless question because we didn't have a, a clear sense of what machine and think mean. This is why I came up with a test. Having said all this, we do need to talk about a specific technology. And when it comes to regulations, you need to know the scope of the law. What does it cover and what is, does it not cover? For this purpose, therefore, we don't have a definition in the scientific sense of necessary and sufficient conditions for a technology to count or not count as artificial intelligence, but we have a legal understanding. What you normally find at the beginning of documents, such as the AI Act or the executive order, is precisely this. It's a way of making explicit how the expression artificial intelligence will be used in the relevant document. This means having some criteria to identify the technology in question. It is about this criteria and legal understanding that I would like to spend a few minutes with you in order to highlight a building consensus between Brussels and Washington. If you look at the original version of the AI Act, and at the executive order by President Biden, you will find that both agree remarkably, substantially, on what they mean by artificial intelligence. They may refer to software or system or a machine system, essentially a technology uh, that outputs results and so forth, but what they are highlighting in both documents is the fact that this technology implements human objectives. This is the first point I would like to highlight. This human objectives is precisely what we need to remember in order not to fall into a science fiction trap. Unfortunately, uh, further discussions and evolutions of the original document, the AI Act, as originally proposed, have lost that clear focus. This is a shame, and I hope it will be revised. The original legal understanding is much better. Why is this so crucial? Because understanding that this technology is implementing human objectives, means having clear in front of us the scope of what kind of behavior we may expect. Now, we all know that, of course, artificial intelligence may be slightly unpredictable. You can't really tell what ChatGPT will uh, provide as an answer. In fact, sometimes uh, hallucinations uh, uh, may occur, indeed, more than sometimes. But we also need to be reminded sometimes that there is a bounded range of options. 
with a little joke, uh, the robot that at home cuts the grass will not clean the floor. He may uh, cut the grass in ways that I didn't expect. He might even have a softer upgrade and start caring about special corners of the garden. It might become more proficient. It might become slightly unpredictable. It might destroy the roses. But let me remind you, we will not make the coffee. It will not clean the carpet. This bounded range of potential uh, answers, behaviors, outputs, is what human objectives in the two legal understandings highlights. We set the perimeter and we decide to turn on or off, use or not use, follow or not follow the output of these machines, which leads us to a fundamental consequence. It is unpleasant, but it's a good reminder once again. If anything goes wrong, if there is any mistake, if there is bias, if there is discrimination, if we use these machines in contexts where they shouldn't be, defense, war, if we are misusing, overusing, or sometimes even underusing all this technology, we are the only ones to be blamed. There is no such thing as AI wants this or does that without human beings having decided that this or that could and ought to be done. So uh, stepping back again to uh, an overall look at the two fundamental documents, the AI Act in its original version and the executive order, we find what I like to call a Brussels-Washington consensus on the scope of the law. A technology that is human-made, engineered, that has a bounded range of sometimes unpredictable outcomes, but that is there to pursue human objectives. There's more in the two legal understandings of the technology that is worth mm -hmm. highlighting. The impact. If you follow the development of the different definitions, uh, so to speak, the different understanding uh, in the AI Act that have been suggested in the further discussions and proposals, you will see that uh, in both cases, uh, Brussels, Washington, we look at the impact that these technologies can have on the environment. This is the second point I would like to highlight. The impact is not just on individuals, societies, but also on the habitat that we all share. Artificial intelligence could be an extraordinary force for good if we could use it to make society better and support the environment. It can be, and it already is, good business, but it shouldn't be only good business. We need, in this century full of global challenges, global muscles, global power, global coordination. And AI could be part of the solution. At the moment, we know that is mostly part of the problem. Too much energy and too much money go into developing tools that are useful up to a certain point. If AI will be another technology that will fuel consumerism, that will support laissez-faire markets, a brainless capitalism, then we will have missed one of the most extraordinary opportunities that technology has ever provided. It's up to us, remember, human objectives, to make sure that this does not happen, that AI develops in the right direction, 
that he helps us to improve society and make our environments flourish. So AI, which is good for business, that is socially preferable and environmentally sustainable, that is the kind of technology we want to develop. And we can do this at least at home in Europe. There is a, a third and final point that I believe is worth stressing in this Brussels Washington consensus. The OED, uh, the OECD, and uh, ISO have also, of course, come up with their own understanding of AI. Indeed, uh, at the moment, uh, Washington is more aligned with uh, the ISO understanding. And Brussels, uh, having developed further uh, discussions, refinements, what I would like to stress, uh, indeed, not improvements, but changes in the original understanding of AI as a technology has uh, come much, much closer to the OECD. So we are looking at a fragile consensus that is polarizing uh, Washington ISO on the one hand, Brussels OECD on the other. That is a shame. But overall, uh, we are looking at converging views. The third point that I said I would like to stress is that we are regulating a technology that is a moving target. This is almost always the case, but today is even more so because the moving target is moving very quickly. Think about the legislation concerning the automobile industry. It has developed, but it has developed more slowly has given us more time to catch up because the automobile industry was developing more slowly. Now the law uh, has its own uh, pace and sometimes that pace is slower than innovation. This is often uh, summarized in terms of you cannot catch up with innovation. And therefore, uh, sometimes the conclusion mistaken is that the legislation is pointless because innovation is always ahead. Well, let me stress that this narrative is a narrative and is a mistaken narrative. There is nothing to catch up with. Legislation, society, politics, liberal democracies at large, set up the direction of innovation and development, not the pace. Innovation, industry, markets, business, set up the speed at which innovation proceeds, they shouldn't be in charge of the direction of that particular development. And so instead of having a false narrative of a train you can never catch up with, I'd rather have a old car uh, analogy here. Regulation is hands on the wheel, innovation is foot on the pedal. The two are complementary. Good regulation means good innovation, and good innovation happens if we have a reasonable, decent framework so that we know where we're going. The outcome is that if we like where we're going, we can't wait to get there. The faster, the better. But if we are driving at night with our lights, having no idea what future we're building, but surely the first thing you want to do is hit the brake. And so if we want to proceed more quickly, it is not less rules and legislation, but more, better, a framework that enables everybody to feel that what we're doing and how we are proceeding are satisfaction, reliable. This is not just uh, the optimist philosopher speaking. I believe as a matter of fact, business hates uncertainty and would rather have tough rules, but rules than nothing at all. Final point as a conclusion. We often consider 
two kinds of problems that may arise from artificial intelligence. Misuse, sometimes intentional, think of organized crime, sometimes unintentional. Think of the bias, for example, in the data that we use to train machine learning. We didn't want to do that, but uh, it did happen. We also uh, should consider overuse when AI is too much, uh, too expensive, unsustainable in terms of environmental impact, and therefore should not be adopted as the right solution. But we shouldn't forget underuse. Underuse is all the wonderful things that we could do thanks to this technology that we're not doing because we are uncertain about what's right and wrong what would be legally acceptable or not, what would be the ethical thing to do. And so in order to avoid underuse, more regulation is the answer. To conclude, Europe is ahead of the game, is still able to make a difference. We should start from home, showing the rest of the world how this is done. So I very much hope that the AI Act, if not immediately, soon will be adopted as a legislation for a Europe that can lead and not only follow when it comes to the sort of future we would like to live in. We can build it today and we can build it properly, the European way, without telling anybody what to do, but showing everybody else what can be done. Have a good day.